Hi, it's Wes. And when last we were looking at the Freewell Sherpa series, we have had our Cinegold Cinemorph attachment on here. It was a somewhat limited system, you could put ND filters and so forth. Some people had asked me whether or not the system would continue to grow and whether or not we would get Android support. Well, the system is growing by leaps and bounds. Let's get into this and see the new expansion of the Freewell Sherpa system. As you can see, they're breaking into the new iPhone 15 Pro Max, and we also have the Galaxy S23 Ultra case. So you want to go Android, you can do that now. And here we have a crazy, enormous new set of lenses and attachments for your phone. Let's take a closer look here. So here on the top, we have ND8, ND16, 32, 64, Snowmist filter, and a CPL. So these are all the uh, filters that can screw onto the front of this. Now, these new ones are larger than the original Cinemorph. I have it here somewhere. I was just using it the other day, but I cannot find it. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But these are bigger. They're not cross compatible with the old ones, but that's fine because these new ones are so much better. In my previous video about that, I found that uh, they weren't super sharp, especially when you're up close. It's the same case here. You don't want to get crazy close to your subject, but these ones are much sharper and the effect of them is much more nuanced. The other one was kind of uh, turned up to 11, which you might like, but it was a very particular look. As you can see here, we have a 1.55 and a 1.33 Cinemorph. Now, if I was going to get one of these, I would definitely just go for the 1.55. The effect of the 1.33 is pretty subtle. Although, I mean, maybe you don't want to go ultra wide and you just want to get those uh, blue streaks. They also come in gold streak version. Now, maybe you want to go with the 1.33, but I love the look of the 1.55. Let's look at some sample footage here. Now, I was doing some uh, stuff outside and in normal circumstances, and it wasn't super obvious. And so I had to go downtown at night and get some really expressive stuff. So this is obviously the most blooming and uh, glowing you're going to get out of these. So just uh, remember that in a lot of normal circumstances, it's not quite so over the top. And as you can see, the bokeh has that anamorphic squeeze to it. Now, the only issue that I have is that when you have a streak near the top or bottom of the frame, it curves quite a bit. You may or may not like, your mileage may vary there. But overall, it's a great look and it's much sharper than before. And I gotta give a shout out, not free will, to Black Magic. In the previous video, I was complaining that I had bought one version of a pro camera for the iPhone and they discontinued it. I bought another one, I think Filmic Pro, and then they moved to a subscription model that was crazy expensive, even though I had already paid for it, driving me crazy. But now there is a Black Magic camera app. You have all that control. They're constantly updating it. Super promising, I'm so happy about that, which really lets us take control of these things for the best. So glad that they came out with that. Those are our Cinemorph lenses. Also in here is a wide angle lens. But you say, why don't I just use the ultra wide lens on my iPhone, on my Samsung? On both those phones, the ultra wide lens, it's trash. <laughs> it's just not good. You have lower resolution, you have much smaller amount of light being gathered, and if you compare them side by side, the main camera to the ultra wide camera, your image quality on the ultra wide is just terrible. And so you can use this ultra wide adapter here and go to 18 millimeters. It's not quite as wide as the ultra wide built into the phone, but the level of detail is just night and day. And also with the 14 Pro and the 15 Pro, you can go up to the 48 megapixel mode and get way more detail. You wouldn't want to get that kind of detail out of the ultra wide on the iPhone because the lens just isn't as good. But you put this lens on here and your ultra wide image quality is so much better. It looks amazing. Let's do a comparison of our ultra wide adapter with the actual ultra wide lens on the phone. Zoom in here and the difference is obvious pretty quickly. So on the left here, we're in 48 megapixel HIF mode, and on the right, it's our 12 megapixel ultra wide. We are getting wider, but the detail level just cannot be compared. So these are just full automatic captures 
no editing, no, we're just letting the camera take the picture. And look at these tree branches, look at the skin. It's, it's just night and day. Now well, let's take something in controlled circumstance inside the studio. Oh, we're already zoomed in. Here we have the ultra wide on the phone built in. As you can see, it is wider again. And, but once we punch in, on the left we have fur on this cat, on the right we have mush. On the left, with our Freewell Ultra Wide Adapter, we're gathering so much more light, so much more detail. It's not even comparable. Your Ultra Wide on the cell phone, it's great for just capturing stuff you wouldn't otherwise get, but if you actually want quality and detail, this Freewell Ultra Wide, it just, it gets you amazing quality shots. Fantastic. I'm really impressed by the optical quality on here. And honestly, I would say this is probably the highest quality of this set. Now, let's keep going though. We also have this, the telephoto lens. And once again, we're in the same boat. Yes, there is a telephoto lens on the iPhone 14, 15 Pro, but the quality isn't fantastic. You have a lower res sensor, you're gathering less light. The problem with shooting telephoto is you need a larger aperture size to get the same amount of light. That's why big telephoto lenses are gigantic. Well, look at this. <laughs> this is a much larger aperture size. So we're gathering a tremendously higher amount of light to feed into this. Now you can put this on either your main camera here, or you can still snap it onto your, your zoom camera. Now the autofocus gets a little dodgy when it's on here. And I've got to say with all of these, the autofocus does not work as well anymore. One of the main reasons for that is the 14 Pro and the 15 Pro, they have the LiDAR rangefinder in here. And the whole focusing system is designed to use that. And as soon as you snap these gigantic things on there, it can't use the LiDAR anymore. So number one, you've got to switch off automatic macro mode, which I mean, you should do already. And number two, you gotta take some care. Now, when you're using the Blackmagic camera app, you can go into manual focus very easily. That works fantastic. But you just have to be a little bit more patient with your focusing. So how does the telephoto look? Well, it's a bit of a subtle effect. It doesn't really cut in that far, but it is very sharp and it works fantastic. I was hoping to get some uh, good bokeh on that, but it doesn't really increase it greatly. The main sensor on this camera is already pretty big and already does have a surprising amount of bokeh for a smartphone without even going into the portrait mode. All right, let's do another comparison here. On the left, all automatic settings. We have the iPhone with the telephoto adapter on the main lens, and then we have the iPhone's built-in telephoto. And as you can see, we're a little tighter on the, on the right. Colors are totally different. <laughs> but we have a much more pleasing effect with the Freewell adapter. We actually have a little bit more bokeh going on here. Level of detail isn't any better. However, if we were to take this into a lower light situation where we would end up with a cleaner image from the Freewell one, because again, we're gathering a lot more light. As you can see, the Freewell one for our settings, we're at ISO 80, 1 205th, of a second on the built-in lens where ISO 100 at 1 100th of a second. And so we are gathering more than twice as much light with the Freewell one. So we're in broad daylight here. As soon as we took it indoors or anywhere else, the Freewell would immediately have a massive advantage. But one of the more interesting things about this is that there is another piece here. This is our macro adapter. So we can take the telephoto lens, we can screw the macro adapter to it. So we're going 70 millimeters and macro. And once again, and this is the biggest difference, when you do macro mode on an iPhone and on the Samsung, it is basically switching to an ultra wide camera and cropping in on it. Your detail level is just abysmal. Now it's fantastic that you can get that close, but it doesn't look very good. However, you can take this, slap it onto your main lens, which again is a much higher quality camera, and you are able to get so close. Now we do have a fair amount of chromatic aberration. 
Not as much as I might have expected. But the depth of field difference on this is just amazing. When you're using the ultra wide to convert to a macro camera, everything looks very flat. When you're using this, oh, it's so creamy and buttery. Now, as you can see off to the side here, it's not very sharp, but when you get right into the middle, oh, off to the side, can I focus there? I can't really focus in on the side. Maybe I'm not close enough. Yeah, I got a lot of chromatic aberration off to the edges, but right in the middle, oh boy, it looks good. Now, once again, your autofocus is going to be a little dodgy. Honestly, the autofocus in this mode probably works better than any of these other things because it has a limited range for it to cycle through. But oh boy, do I love this macro mode. It works fantastically. And once again, I am surprised at the quality of the optics that they've come out with here. And when you get in tight, look at that bokeh. And this isn't some kind of portrait mode or some wacky uh, machine learning algorithm. This is just what it looks like. This is all optics on your phone. And so if you want to take something cinematic, we have the new Cinemorph filters. And if you want to do some really good macro work, you can do that at the telephoto and let's say you're going for a hike or heck going on vacation and you don't want to bring a big camera with you finally you can make use of that fantastic big main sensor on your phone and use it for ultra wide use it for telephoto and really get the most out of that now on the new google pixel they have the pixel pro 8 pro they have 48 megapixel sensors i think under all three cameras so that's fantastic but even then there are going to be compromises when it comes to lens design. If we look at the actual camera specs for it though, it's a bit deceiving. The main camera, we have a pixel pitch of 1.2 micrometer, whereas on the telephoto and the ultra wide, they are 48 to 50 megapixels, but the pixel pitch is about half that. And so you still have significantly lower image quality overall. So it's nice to have the resolution, but you're still not gathering as much light. And just as a quick comparison, you can see that the iPhone's main camera has a larger sensor with larger pixels and similar megapixel count. The primary camera on this has the widest aperture. But once you go into telephoto, there's only so much you can do unless you have a bigger aperture. Look at the size of this aperture. <laughs> so we are gathering a lot more light that can make your pictures look a lot better. Let's see if this works. This was not a recommended uh, mode here. I have put the macro onto the ultra wide. Yep, still works. So now I'm in ultra wide macro mode. So yeah, and once again, we have some nice bokeh. Not getting quite as close. And that was one of the other disadvantages of using the macro lens built into the phone is that it's an ultra wide lens. So you have to smash your camera right against the thing that you're taking a picture of or a video of. And so I'm a little ultra wide, I have to get pretty close here. But when you slap it onto the telephoto lens, you don't have to be right on top of everything anymore. Let's see if the macro adapter works on the Cine one here. This is kind of going crazy. Is this a terrible idea? Oh, it works. So yeah, you can make anything closer focusing with this adapter. That's fantastic. Why didn't I think of doing that before? Can't focus very far away though. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, we got a little free well action here again. Our magnetic filters. Yeah, as you can see, the bloom effect is much more subtle on this. Now that I'm not shooting out at night anymore, I'm still shooting straight into this light. And my bloom, it's negligible. It's not that much. 
which is nice. So if you're going to do some more serious work, which I feel like this set is designed for, and last of all, here is the snow mist filter. Honestly, it's a little heavy handed for me. I'd rather just a standard mist filter, but these Cinemorph ones have a little bit of bloom to them to begin with, so they kind of cover that base. But if you like that really dusty, smoky look, this filter will get you there. Pricing has gone up a little bit, but our options and quality have gone up a lot. So if you want to get really serious about your smartphone photography and videography, there are links down in the description below for you to pick up your own. It'll help support this channel and feed my fat cats. Until next time, let's go take some photos. <laughs>